Coach, I know the VMI game had you very concerned going into it. Uh, you pulled away late. When, at what point did it dawn on you, I can relax now, this is going to happen? Oh, gosh, probably three minutes to go in the game. Uh, anytime that you have a game like that, and there was so much riding on it, uh, it's very difficult to just relax. Uh, mentally, you're going through a multitude of scenarios. What happens if uh, quarterback slips, ball goes on the ground, uh, they return for a touchdown, they go for an onside kick. You're, there's a, a multitude of things, and most of them are bad that you're thinking about. But um, our guys uh, play great D. Uh, offensively, we were opportunistic. Every time they gave it to us, we, we did something with it for the most part. And, uh, and we scored touchdowns versus a lot of field goals. And, uh, and that was huge. You know, we talked about it a moment ago. Uh, you, you haven't had many games this year where you had a comfortable margin late. It, how important was it and what was it like for you seeing some of those second and third stringers get out there and get some significant playing time? Well, it, matter of fact, this was the first one that uh, we were able to relax a little bit. Uh, it was great to see the guys that had put in a lot of time, put in a lot of work, uh, hard work, a lot of practice time. And uh, because the nature of the season, the way that it went, everything was a nail biter down to the end. Uh, you're going to go with your, your best guys, your first team guys. And some of those guys just didn't get the reps that they may have normally got. Uh, but uh, they came out, they responded, did a great job. Um, they were having fun. Uh, they were intense. They, they were getting after it, and uh, I, I was proud of them. Great effort. Different kind of game this week. South Carolina, SEC opponent, uh, shouldn't affect your playoff seating one way or the other unless you win. Uh, but it, it's tricky, isn't it, to try to play a game like this knowing the playoffs are around the corner and you may have some guys who are banged up. Well, uh, I think the, the big thing is always – understand uh, what your goals are and understand that uh, they, they come at uh, a, a different cost. Uh, you have uh, your initial goal of winning the Southern Conference Championship and uh, you're going to do everything you can do to, to get that done. Players now that uh, went basically eight straight weeks in a row, uh, we, we've got some guys that are nicked up, bummed up a little bit. And, uh, uh, you know, we'll probably have to hold some of them. All that being said, uh, our mission and our, our mindset is going to be to go down there, do the best we can, and, and uh, do everything we can do to try to win the game. But uh, as a coach, you've got to understand that after that game's over, um, there, there's something else down the road coming, and it's going to be the playoffs. And um, our ultimate goal would be uh, always to win a national championship. Uh, and to do that, uh, a lot of times what happens, uh, you've – You've got to have a team that's as healthy as you possibly can get them. Uh, I can remember back in 2003, it was interesting, but uh, the guys that we started with, we finished with against Delaware. And that was a 12-week uh, stretch, and we finished in uh, the semifinals. And uh, all that being said, history repeats itself every year that you have a good year for the most part, you'll finish with those guys. Uh, this year, it's, it's been one of those years where uh, not many guys have gone out for a season, but th there's been intermittent uh, injuries, uh, a two-week injury, a three-week injury. Uh, in uh, Rue Daniels' case, it, I, I think, you know, he went like five. Uh, but – the moral of the story is uh, we're, we're going to do our very best when we go down there. Uh, we're going to 
do our best to be uh, the best football team we can be. Uh, is that going to be good enough to uh, have a shot at winning? I don't know. But uh, our mindset's not going going to be just to go down there and, and do a bus ride and, you know, come on back. Uh, you know, they're, they're, we're, we definitely want to go down there and give it our best shot and see what happens. Speaking of being in these games, last time you did go to South Carolina, Wofford had uh, pretty much clinched a playoff berth with a win over Chattanooga the week before. South Carolina's nationally ranked at the FBS level. It's 7-7 in the fourth quarter. What do you recall from that game? Uh, that What things happened to keep you in that game and give you a look at them? Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, we took care of the ball. Uh, we made plays on defense. Uh, we had uh, a little bit of luck, and uh, it's the fourth quarter, and we're driving. Uh, we've got a chance to go ahead, and uh, ended up. I, I I can remember the play. We're we're pitching the football to the left. Uh, we get them all blocked. Uh, they had a all American free safety. I think his name was Swearinger, and we've got a freshman that had the football on his inside arm and uh, he put his head on the the ball and the ball went out and the tide of the game turned right there. Uh, if we secure the ball, uh, we were uh, moving the ball pretty well and uh, we had a chance to at least kick a field goal if not score a touchdown and, and go ahead. So it, you never know how it may have turned out. It, uh, when you uh, do the things that beat you, uh, a lot of times uh, you're going to get beat. And I'm talking about penalties. I'm talking about turning the ball over. I'm talking about lack of execution. Sheila, conference championship. I know this is your first year as defensive coordinator. What does it mean to you in your new role to have your team uh, win a title? Unbelievable experience this year. To, to win a conference championship in what is a phenomenal football league is really hard to do. And, and sometimes I think uh, players, coaches, fans lose sight of how difficult it is. So the, the opportunity to do that this year, I think it just speaks to the quality of the players that we have, the, the coaching staff that we have, the commitment, dedication. Uh, our guys, they've, just, they've worked so hard, and, and it's just been really neat to see them achieve this goal. I know you've been an assistant coach for many years, first year as a coordinator. What has the learning curve been like for you? It's been a process that's been helped along by really good players and really good coaches. Our defensive coaching staff is exceptional. It's been just a continued growing process for me individually, for our staff. I think every year you, you work really hard to try to get your, your coaching staff on the same page, and you do that slowly through time, just continuing to, to meet and really discussing issues, being able to work through things that, that are problems and solve problems. That's the key is that continual uh, you know, develop, development individually and collectively. And then if you can get on the same page as a, as a staff, then you've got a great opportunity for your, your players to, to be on the same page with how all the pieces fit together. And that's, that's the big key is everybody being on the same page out there on the field, knowing where their help is, knowing where the stress points are, and, uh, and just getting them to play fast. I want to talk about some of your players and positions. Uh, at corner, you've got Devin Watson, George B.C. Both have had nice years. Both are just sophomores. Are they ahead of their years in terms of development? Well, Devin's a junior, and George is a sophomore. But, that, I mean, there are two guys that, that uh, last year was their first year playing. Uh, George was a uh, second-year freshman. Devin was going into sophomore year, and he actually played safety as a, as a true freshman. So they, they got a lot of great game reps last year, and they continued to get better and better as, as the season went on last year. And it, that's just continued snowballed through spring practice and the season. They know what to do, and their technique continues to improve, and they're, they're just playing fast. And, again, we, just, we talk about that all the time with our guys. If you play fast, that means you know your job and you execute it at a high rate of speed. So whatever the job is that you have, if you do it at a high rate of speed and execute your job, then you've got a chance to be successful. 
How important is your depth on the defensive line? And at times, how much do you miss Mikel? Now he's out with uh, Mono right now. Our depth on defense line is critical. It's quality. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's quality depth. And it has been. We, we've had, for different reasons, we've had guys out um, for, for ball games this year. And we've had guys that have had to come out of games. And Coach Rise does a phenomenal job with those guys. Uh, they work extremely hard. They're a talented group. Uh, winning the front is the, the biggest thing for our defense. Being able to, to do a good job in the run game, it starts up front with those guys, our front seven, and, and they've just done a phenomenal job all year long. Your linebacking core, I know Detavius has been a little dinged up, but when he is on, what makes him a special player? He plays extremely fast. He is very smart, a very intelligent football player, and a lot of times he knows uh, – if you look at – uh, Luke Keekley for the Carolina Panthers. If you watch any ball game that they play, a lot of times you'll see him on TV. He's out there pointing. He's pushing somebody to a different gap responsibility. He knows what's coming before the ball snapped. And Detavius has a lot of those same characteristics. He, he's very intelligent uh, in terms of uh, understanding what the, the formation means to him and, and what plays to expect. And then because of that, he plays really fast off of his key progression. And then he is just – he's a physical – physical guy I mean there's been multiple times in games this year where he has just been a train wreck for somebody on the opposing side of the line of scrimmage and golly he's just he's a really exceptional football player you have so much depth on defense seemingly at all positions you're you're you've been the recruiting coordinator how much does it mean to you as somebody who helped bring these guys in that you can go two or even three deep at a number of positions it's huge it's it's huge when you when you have good talented players that can be replaced by good, talented players. Uh, we, we've been very blessed right now. We do. We have a lot. And, and I said this back in the offseason. You know, I was coming into this new role as a defensive coordinator, and you could not have asked for a better situation coming into this with a great group of coaches and a great group of returning players that were talented and had a lot of game experience and a lot of guys returning. So it, it's been phenomenal. And, you know, from that standpoint, I, recruiting coordinator um, – I just kind of help get cars and do different things like that. It's, it's not – I mean, I, our coaches do a great job. And, and these guys that are on our team right now, the vast majority of them, they were here before I got back from, you know, my time as a, as a stay-at-home dad. So um, I haven't really had a whole lot to do with that. We just, we, we've been blessed to have some coaches that have gone there and done a great job recruiting. Lennox McAfee, how does it feel to be a conference champion? Oh, it feels good. It was a lot of work put in in this uh, summertime interim. Going back to last year, you know, a lot of work being put in, and, you know, it's good to have your fruits of your labor. You mentioned summertime. How important was it that so many guys stayed in Spartanburg for the summer? Um, it's really important because, you know, it goes beyond just, you know, working out. You know, we, got, we had to have jobs in the summertime, but it's about, like, the bond that we get from, you know, just eating together every day downtime just chilling playing cards playing a game so you know we get that team bond that you know you can't get unless you're here you played so many close games this year what was it like against vmi to have a game where third and fourth quarter y y you had things wrapped up for the most part it felt good like <laughs> it really ain't too good for my nerves you know how we just be going <laughs> going down to the wire so much but you know, it was fun to see other people get to play, and it's good for our bodies to get a little rest. Well, you don't get to rest that much. You get South Carolina this week. Uh, you've played some FBS teams since you've been here, Ole Miss last year. What's it like getting ready for games like this? Um, it's really just exciting, you know. They, you know, going into recruiting process, they basically say you're not good enough to play for them. So it's good to just, you know, be able to have the opportunity to show that you could. What do you look forward to most playing in front of 80,000 plus people? Does that amp you up? Uh, definitely. It's just, it's an environment that we don't get to see too often, so it'll be fun.